Fulbright, I was a, a WASP and a Women Air Force Service pilot during World War II. We were the best kept secret of World War II. Uh, there were a thousand women pilots during World War II, but very few people knew about it because they figured if the enemy knew that we were in bad enough shape to have to have the women fly the airplanes, why well, they could defeat us just pretty quick. Anyway, that uh, so that's who I am. I got interested in flying when I was eight years old. My dad took me out to um, uh, out to a pasture where there was an old plane landed and was taking people up. And he asked me if I wanted to go up, and and I said yes. Yeah. So I got to go up in an open cockpit airplane when I was eight years old, and I must have put that in the back of my mind because uh, after I finished uh, college and started taking flying lessons. So by, <clears throat> by the time Pearl Harbor and all that, I already had my private license and enough hours to qualify. And at that time, I was uh, waiting to fly one morning out at English Field there in Amarillo, and, and I saw this article and, and at the end of the article about the women flying training service and if i was interested to write to jacqueline cockburn in fort worth which i did i got a letter from her to saying come to fort worth to be interviewed and i did and we had to be 21 and have 75 hours and a private pilot's lesson which i had so I was accepted into the seventh class. We had the same training as the men. We were the first women to be trained and fly the military airplanes. In primary, we flew the PT-19. In basic, we threw the uh, basic trainer. And then in advanced, we flew the AT-6 and the twin engine C-78. Uh, I went in, in May of 1943 and uh, finished in uh, November, got my wings. There were 20 out of our class picked to uh, go to B-25 transition school. The girls hadn't flown B-25s uh, before. Maybe some of them had in the, in the um, uh, that were in the ferry command, I'm not sure about that, but we were the first ones to train be in transition school. We logged about 165 hours between November and the middle of February, which was a lot of hours to log in that length of time. We were attached to the third air force and uh, there we trained the boys at Fort Bliss when they went overseas. We were not allowed to go overseas. Uh, we did uh, all of our flying here in the States. So <clears throat> we flew almost night and day there in El Paso because we were flying B-25s and B-26 towing the targets 2,500 feet behind our airplanes. Then the boys on the ground would shoot at the targets and they shot colored bullets so that their officers could, could tell whether they hit the targets or not. And <clears throat> then we flew strafing missions and on the strafing missions we flew the P-47 and we flew the uh, two Navy hell divers, the Dauntless uh, A-24 and the Curtis uh, A-25. Uh, we would go up then just practically over their heads. They were supposed to jump out of the truck and hit the ground, which sometimes they did and sometimes they didn't. It was a lot of fun for us to do that anyway. And then in the, at night, we flew the twin engine beach, uh, the AT-7, the AT-11, to train the boys to using searchlights. We'd, fly a pattern and then they would try to find it in the surf lights. One night we were towing targets at night for them to find the target and the flak started 
breaking in front of us rather than behind us, which was not a very good idea. So we called and told them we had to do a little evasive act and get away from where they were shooting and told them that we were going back to base. We, we cut the target and let it go. And we were going back to base and when they learned to shoot better, we'd come back. So we were there until uh, December 1944 when the war was winding down and they decided that they had enough pilots. A lot of the pilots were coming back from overseas and so they needed to get rid of the women. Now, technically, we were with civil service, so we were technically not military. Although everybody thought we were, we had all the respect of officers. Everybody thought we were officers, but we were technically with civil service. Therefore, we didn't get any rides home or anything, but we were deactivated in, on December 20th, 1944. I had no veteran status because we were in civil service. Our files were sealed for over 30 years. And we finally got our veteran status after going through Congress and, and really fighting for that in 1977, when they announced that they were now training women in the Air Force, and that was the first time women had flown military airplanes. Well, that kind of got our dander up, and so we went to Washington, D.C several of the girls did. I did not go, but I sent some of my files and um, did what we, they, we had to do to get a, another bill through Congress and Barry Goldwater helped us and finally got our veteran status. I had a brother who was also in the Air Force. He was not a pilot. He was a crew chief on B-25 in, um, uh, and he was stationed in Sicily. And when he was uh, sent home to uh, be mustered out, that he had to come clear to El Paso where I was stationed. So I met him we, when, uh, during those days, you mostly took Greyhound buses to go clear across the country. And I told him that I had arranged with my commanding officer that, that he would uh, let me have a B-25 to take him home to Amarillo. And um, he said, oh, no, I can just take the bus. So I said, no, we're going to fly. So one of the other girls that I flew with, uh, he was not very happy to get in to the B-25 with his little sister as pilot. And, uh, but uh, he sat back where the crew chief usually sat, did not look very comfortable at all. Tommy Thompson was with me. So Tommy and I had decided that that unbeknownst to him, we would do the doodle takeoff. And uh, so we taxied down to the end of the runway there. And of course, with the, that kind of takeoff, you hold the brakes really tight and then run the engines up almost to full speed and then turn the brakes loose and you get off the ground pretty fast. That's what Doolittle had when he had the B-25s bombing Japan, he, they had to take off of a carrier, so they had to learn to get those B-25s off the carrier real fast. Well, my brother was not too happy. He was just white. He was sitting back there thinking this was probably his last day on earth. So when we, we got over Canyon, and I told him, <clears throat> I thought we ought to go down and buzz our hometown. And he didn't think that was necessary, but we did it anyway. And then Sean dealt up and, and we're practically, by the time we got back to altitude, we were practically at Emerald Air Force Base. So I have never seen anyone so glad to get off of an airplane in my life as my brother was when he did not have anything to say whatsoever. I think he was shocked that he was still alive. <laughs> so that was uh, something that, that Tommy and I both enjoyed. <laughs> so uh, after all of us, of course, just went home after we were deactivated in 1944, at the end of 44, 
before the war was over. Went back home and went about our lives. Some of the girls kept flying. And, uh, and some of us, uh, another girl from Canyon and myself, we ferried some of the surplus airplanes from one base to the other. I don't know what the government was doing with them, but for a while after, but we decided that they were pretty beat up and <laughs> not not very well taken care of because we were just taking them to a graveyard, to Wickenburg, Arizona, and to Tucson, Arizona, and uh, that was about it. But we didn't do that very long. And then, but some of the girls did keep on flying and some of them were instructors and but it was very difficult because uh, you go to the airlines we went to the airlines because we had a lot of experience and ones of us that were in the early classes and a lot of flying time of they uh, so that that was so something we thought we might do was get into the flying with the airlines. Well, they wouldn't even talk to us because women don't fly. So that was about the end of most of us, about the, except every once in a while, you know, we got, got to fly. So that's about the end of my story. I then became a stockbroker in Phoenix, Arizona, one of the first women stockbrokers in Phoenix. And I was stockbroker for 50 years and finally retired from that when I was 85. And right now, if I make it till June, I'll have my hundreds. Everybody during World War II wanted to do something for our country. People, people didn't really realize how close we were to Germans on the East Coast and the Japanese on the West Coast getting into our country. So we felt like we were doing our part anyway. Of course, we also enjoyed flying all those airplanes too. We flew about everything that the, um, that the Air Force had. I was checked out on 12 different airplanes. So anyway, that's, that's my story. And thank you very much for inviting me to do this. <laughs>